Here with Reaction Florida, Congressman Mike Waltz is with us, along with Darren Hoover, Gold Star father of U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Taylor Hoover. He was killed in Afghanistan uh, three years ago. Mr. Hoover, my, 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 all our love and prayers and, and support for you and your family. I don't know if, if anyone ever overcomes something like this. I would assume the answer is no. Thanks for having me, Sean. And, and you're correct. The answer is absolutely not. Uh, you know, a, a parent shouldn't be the one burying their child. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a somber day, but it's also a day of remembrance that we get to highlight his life and his actions, his heroic actions, and those of his, his uh, fellow members that were there with him that day. And, you know, for all the for all of the wishing and wanting and wish we had him back, you know, I, we couldn't be more proud of him uh, and proud of all of the rest of them that stood tall and stood in the breach that day, those two weeks leading up to that day and that continue to do so. And, and grateful that we have men and women still wanting to join up. Let me let me get to you, Congressman, because I think this is important. Uh, the fact that they viewed this as a success and they bragged about it is is alarming in and of itself. She is the last person in the room. OK, um, Donald Trump had a very different foreign policy. We didn't lose a single American the last 18 months he was president in Afghanistan. And he's told us the story why. He told us that he called the head of the Taliban and, and actually let the head of the Taliban know his exact position while talking to him and basically implying, why do you why do you show me a picture of my house? Because I know where you are and I will come for you first. Basically, to me, that was the message Donald Trump was sent, was sending. Um, this is just one small one small position of what are the most radical positions ever, and she doesn't want to talk to the American people. We have a lot of problems going on here, and she just wants to duck and hide and dodge and weave and, and, and basically hide in the basement, and the media so far is letting her get away with it, letting her get away with it. Well, Sean, President Trump is a, a tough guy. He's a commander-in-chief, and he knows how to deal with whether it's the terrorists, she, Putin, or the Ayatollahs. Uh, and when he uh, tells Abdul, uh, the head of the Taliban, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have uh, a, you know, a missile in your house if you don't live up to your end of the bargain, then you don't have any Americans killed. That's what we need in a commander in chief. And what we saw today at Arlington was a commander in chief who cared. Uh, a commander in chief who was present and stood with these families uh, at their graveside. And you know what else he promised them on top of promising accountability and to fire every official? Uh, he promised these families transparency. The other thing they haven't gotten from Harris or Biden. And when he's back in office, he'll release all the tapes, all the videos, all the emails, uh, yeah, all of it, so that they have the closure and the answers uh, that they need. Um, so this is a commander in chief we have to have. And the thing that was so infuriating today, Sean, was that everybody standing there. Look, I've lost Green Berets in combat. Uh, you know, we we had a cemetery full of people we've lost. But everybody standing there knew this didn't have to happen. This was senseless. Darren Hoover did not have to lose his son Taylor. Uh, and that everybody knows you take the military out after you take our civilians and you take our allies out. I mean, President Trump says it best. A five-year-old uh, would know that. Uh, so we, we have to have President Trump back in office as commander in chief that could take care of our families, take care of our veterans and deal with the likes of the Taliban, Xi, Putin and the rest. I don't think they fear Kamala Harris at all, like they haven't feared Biden. Um, no. what, what, what words, Mr. Hoover, do you have uh, for the American people? We, we saw what happened when the bodies were returned home and Joe Biden looking at his watch. He was looking at his watch, right? Yes, he was. Every, every single time that uh, a casket came off of that plane, he was checking it. Um, 
you know, to the American people, just please understand that what President Trump did today means all that we could have ever asked for in the world. He cares. He has done from day one when we've sat down with him at both Mar-a-Lago, at Bedminster, when we've been to his rallies, when we were at the RNC. The man cares deeply about this country. And I wish, I wish so bad that the rest of the country could see what we see behind the scenes, the love, the compassion, the, the honor, the integrity behind everything that he does. And, and make no mistake about it, he's very measured. But as far as the, the Biden and Harris administration, we still to this day, still to this day, we have not heard one thing. And my main question is, how did this happen? How did you allow this to happen? I want to know the intel that they based everything off of to give them, to get them to the point well. where they pulled everything out like they did. And they let them, them march all they. the way up. They Correct. let them march from province to province to province, and they didn't stop them. And and Correct. and then the next thing they know, they're they're pressed, they're uh, they're back against the wall. They abandoned Americans behind enemy lines, and heroes like your son lost his life. Thirteen Americans, and and many more abandoned behind enemy lines. I'm very sorry, Mr. Hoover. Our prayers are with you. Please know that, and I I, I know I speak for this audience. Congressman Waltz, thank you, too. When we